Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a ton of stories to cover, so I figured I would do this style of video, but I'll be back to normal on Wednesday. Either way, for today, I've got two new AMD GPUs that are imminent, more compatibility issues with Windows 11, Intel's new high-end CPUs are coming, and incredible news on GPU pricing. Of course, with all this new hardware coming out, it can get tough to know what to buy. That's why I offer my PC hardware suggestions at kit.co slash gamermelt. In it, I go over why you may want to buy one thing over another, from GPUs to CPUs and more, as well as provide tips when buying certain components. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Plus, when you make a purchase, it helps the channel out at no additional cost to you. So don't wait and visit kit.co slash gamermelt or click the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD's RX 6600 and 6600 XT GPUs have already been listed on PowerColor. You can see down here that they actually have product categories for the two upcoming GPUs. And this is just a few short days after we actually got our first render of the GPU. Now, I didn't cover that when it first came out, I will say, but that was really just because that video was already getting really long and there was just way more important stuff to discuss. Either way, this was the render of the card, at least it's rumored to be, of the 6600 XT. So yeah, basically the cards are certainly set to be coming soon, although I will say that AMD actually promised the launch, I believe it was down here, yep. He mentions it right here, AMD already promised the launch within the first half of 2021, but clearly that did not happen. With that said, we do have, uh, they did launch Navi 23 products, being the 6600M, as well as the Radeon Pro W6600. So the M is the mobile variant, and then the Radeon Pro is obviously the workstation card, though they also released a mobile variant for the Pro version as well. So we haven't actually seen the desktop parts that were supposed to come, but clearly they are coming very soon. And next up for today is if Windows 11 compatibility hasn't been confusing enough. And really quickly before I get to that, I'll go ahead and recap for those who haven't been following along. Basically, Microsoft released these requirements. There was a hard and a soft floor, and the hard floor obviously meant you wouldn't be able to install Windows 11 at all. There's just flat not compatibility, and that only required one gigahertz or faster with two or more core CPU, and I believe it was TPM version 1.2. Well, then they decided to completely scratch that and effectively said, well, you're also going to need a compatible 64-bit processor. And when we look at those lists, it doesn't include 1st Gen Ryzen, 6th or 7th Gen uh, Intel processors. So some fairly new CPUs, but it then said, basically, if you don't meet this, you will not be able to get Windows 11. It just flat won't work. And in the last update, we then learned that they changed it yet again by saying you may not, you can see it right here, may not be able to install Windows 11 if your device does not meet these requirements. So hopefully that is a good sign that, hey, maybe Microsoft really will change these, you know, really hard kind of level requirements that effectively exclude millions of PCs. So with all of that, this brings us to the next story where we can see that motherboard makers are effectively releasing information to let you know whether or not your motherboard supports TPM 2.0, specifically a firmware-based TPM 2.0, so you can go in the BIOS and effectively turn it on. Now, the thing that makes this even more confusing is that when we go down here, we can see that some motherboard makers like MSI are offering support for, I, I will go ahead and say really quickly that on the AMD side, I do believe most all of them support 300, 400, and 500 series motherboards. So pretty much everything for Ryzen's AM4 platform. But when we get over to Intel, you can see that MSI supports 100 and 200 series. But then whenever we go to Biostar, it doesn't support any 100 series, but does support the 250 series. Seems kind of odd and random, but you can see that's at least what they're showing. And then whenever we move down to a Zeus, you can see they don't support 100 or 200 series motherboards at all. With that said, this could just be that they're excluding it specifically because those are the ones made for sixth and seventh gen, and they're trying to more or less make a compatibility list for 
Windows 11, not just TPM 2.0, except for this to be 250. That kind of seems odd and seems like that may really not be the reason. But basically what this means is you can see right here really quickly, sixth and seventh gen, they do have asterisks just because that's what the generations um, of these chipsets support. But yet obviously while sure they add TPM 2.0, Windows 11 does not technically support those CPUs. So you probably can't install it anyway if they keep those requirements as of yet. But what's odd about Biostar and Asus, and I will say it doesn't list Gigabyte here, but um, I do believe Gigabyte did offer support for the 100 and 200 series. With that said, I'm not 100% sure, but I will have some links down in the description for those who are curious about that. But as of now, I do believe that they do. But if you have something like Biostar and you have, let's say, a 100 series motherboard, basically what this would mean is that even if Microsoft decides, hey, 6 and 7 gen are actually okay, you will probably have to buy something like a TPM 2.0 module. But once again, that's if Biostar doesn't change it, if and or when Microsoft does change the requirements to allow 6th and 7th gen. So yeah, really confusing here if you can't tell, but that's effectively where we are as of now. Moving right along, we have some great news for those who love HEDT CPUs, that is high-end desktop CPUs, Specifically, if you are a big fan of Intel's X series of processors. For those who don't know, it has been quite a while since we've seen one of their processors, specifically because Intel is still on the 14 nanometer process, while AMD is obviously on 7 nanometers. And at this point, I really don't think that Intel can even push their HEDT products much further at all without completely blowing out the power envelope. So I really think that's why we haven't seen anything like that at all. But at least according to this roadmap, there's a decent chance that we will see a new lineup in Q2 of next year. Obviously, that is a little bit disappointing, but don't forget that we are still expecting a new series of Threadrippers, so hopefully that will hold you over until that time. With that said, there is some interesting stuff here. For one, you can see if we get really close here that it's now on the W790 chipset. So W, which video cards is kind of led to believe that what that means is that they're effectively getting rid of the X moniker for their HEDT CPUs. And in fact, they've actually heard some rumors that high-end Alder Lake S could actually adopt the X moniker. So instead of, let's say, uh, you know, i9-12960K, it would be the i9-12960X for the LGA 1700 socket. And because of that, Sapphire Rapids, their HEDT products, would have to pick up this new moniker, W. Obviously, it doesn't have the same kind of ring as X does, and especially how it looks on a product, but regardless, it does look like that's the way they're going. And next up for today, I have some great news from 3dcenter.org. If you remember, just last month, I shared a story where GP prices had plummeted all the way down... To, uh, okay. It, it sounds really bad when I say it, but give me just a second because we do have some really good news here. But it really was good because it went all the way up from 304% over MSRP down all the way to 191%. Now, I will go ahead and say that this is a German site. So, yes, it is in reference to uh, pricing in Germany, but this should translate. And even if it hasn't now, it should fairly soon translate to other parts of the world. Anyway, what's unbelievable is that it's only been two weeks since that last one you can see right here development in the right direction compared to two weeks ago so in two weeks it's dipped from 191 percent all the way down to 153 percent and actually even amd's gpu pricing has dipped all the way from 181 to 153 and once again that's two weeks not a month, not two months, anything like that, two weeks. So that is a huge drop. And what's great is that, you know, if you do see something that's only 50% higher, I would actually hold off. And the reason why is because we are actually seeing some dips. You can see right here, it says that GPU power 
going into the Ethereum network. And remember that Ethereum is the main one that people buy GPUs for just because Bitcoin at this point uses nothing but ASICs. Anyway, the interesting part is that while yes, the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum does seem to be leveling out, in just the last month, Ethereum's hash rate plummeted. We're talking 19% in just one month. And what that means is that basically a lot less people are mining Ethereum. And that leads us right back to China where they've really cracked down on cryptocurrency miners. Remember not long ago, I actually talked about the fact that China was effectively shutting down tons of these miners. Well, it looks like they're actually selling off their GPUs. Now, with that said, there is a chance that they'll end up just moving to some other country to start back with their business. But the fact that they're actually selling them off tells me that they're probably just shutting down in general. And that obviously means with all of these things happening that we may could see it continue to drop at this level. In fact, we could potentially even see it drop lower than MSRP. Now, that would specifically be because of an influx in used GPUs from mining. And obviously I do understand people being reluctant to purchase those GPUs, but regardless, if that does happen, it would almost certainly lower prices that much more in the retail market as well. So if you are someone who is still in the market for a new GPU, and I know tons of you are, there is hope. There's really good hope. Things are getting better and better by the day. Once again, from 191% above MSRP, all the way down to just 153%. And yes, I know we are still above MSRP. I know I'm going to get tons of comments about that. But guys, this was just two weeks. So while that does it for today, I know that I rambled and rambled here on some of these. But I was just really excited to go over this. And if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. And my question to you is... What GPU, when prices do finally get to relatively decent levels, what GPU are you planning to buy? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.